think about now, it's the wake up show, you know. Grab a pack of smoke, gather on our folks, it's through the vintage of morning, cup of YouTubers, what's happening in the real world? I hope everybody had a great weekend. I hope uh, everybody was out there picking, doing some, uh, some making some money. Uh, this is Mike here with my morning cup of Joe show. I've got my cup of coffee in the morning here. It's ooh, it's a good blend too. This is the it's a Starbucks. What's the blend in this one? I don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is bold stuff. I love it. Um, yeah. So I hope everybody had a great weekend. I had a great weekend. Uh, super, super busy, um, you know, picking, selling, doing a lot of crazy things. So, um, you know, I hope that you guys out there as well had a great weekend. And today's Monday, and, and this is my little pickup show where um, I'm going to go over a bunch of different things in terms of, you know, selling, reselling, picking, you know, doing this um, full-time, part-time. You know, this is kind of what this show is about. And, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm thankful for all you guys out there that are watching that are staying tuned to my channel. I super appreciate it. Um, you know, I'm going to do this show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning um, around 9.30 um, Central Time, so stay tuned if you're into this. Um, but, you know, I want to go over some things here today. I've got uh, a lot of different topics, a lot of different things that I want to I wanna go over. Um, <clears throat> you know, the first one is, is understanding what you're doing. You have to understand what you're doing if you're going to be in this business. You have to work hard long hours, you know, um, you have to build an inventory out there. You, you got to, you know, you got to build this inventory. That's how you sell items, you know. You can go out there, pick items, throw them all to auction, and then collect your money at the end of the week or end of three days or seven days or whatever it may be. But you're going to want to, um, you know, you're going to want to create inventory at some point, you know, especially if you're doing this full time um, or even part time. You know, inventory is key. You always want to have items out there where people can purchase them right now rather than, you know, um, waiting for something to end. You know, there's a lot of people, and I've bounced off um, a lot of other sellers out there. People like the fact that they can just click the button and buy it now and be done with it, you know. Um, people don't want to wait around for auctions to end, you know. And there's some people that, you know, they want the auctions. They, they get to thrill the hunt and see if they can snag the deal. So, you know, it's to each his own. But try to cover both of those bases if you're doing the eBay program. You know, and then, you know, the other keys is, you know, you got to pay yourself, guys. If you can't get in a funk where you're paying yourself, you know, you're going to get in some trouble. And, you know, you got to pay your bills then, you know. So, you know, take 10%, like my picking fund, like I talked about in my other videos. You know, pay your bills. Um, you know, pay your mandatory stuff. Um, whether you do this part-time or full-time, you know, understand what you're buying to resell. Understand, you know, exactly what you're doing. Don't just start going out there and buying random things that are people, you know, because you watch somebody on YouTube. You know, buy things that make sense to you. You know, you got to learn experience with this. You got to, you got to go out to get experience. You know, you got to go out and purchase items and see what sells and and do it on your own. Um, you know, tips are out there that are great. You know, people are showing some awesome picks out there, but really to to understand the game, you got to go out and do it yourself. You know, and remember, I mean, if you're doing this part time or full time, this is your job. This is your job. You got to, you know, there's no boss there. There's no company. You're the company. You know, you're deciding your own fate. You're deciding your own paycheck. So keep that in mind. You know, if you work really hard at it, you know, um, you, you know, the, the results are going to come. Whether they're not, they're not coming right now, they will come. It's just a matter of time. Give it some time. You know, um, 
you know, you, you, you know, really, who's your boss? You know, is it? It's yeah, you're, it's yourself. But you got to remember, your customers are paying you. You know, those those are your bosses. Every one of those people. So treat them with the utmost importance. You know, provide them excellent customer service. You know, do everything you can for them. Bend over backwards. But uh, you know, that is that's that's how you're going to determine your pay and what you're worth. You know, that that's what's. Uh, the beauty of everything here it's you know that your customers are going to pay you based on what you're worth so 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 think about that think about that today um, you know this is not your typical small business for for you guys that are out there that are that are new to this and you're trying to learn um, people have failed over and over and over just like everything else in life and then people have succeeded you know at doing this it all comes down to you you know and and how much you want it how much do you want it? How much do you want to go out there and succeed? You know, there's nothing like succeeding, you know. Um, and then if you fail at things, I mean, shit, that happens all the time, you know. Don't get discouraged. Just keep keep yourself in the game. Imagine it like you're boxing, you know, and you're going back and forth. And, you know, just keep hanging in there, man. Get to round 10. Get to round 12. Get to the end of the, the match. It's, it's almost like, you know, um, like the fat cat, you know, the fat cat syndrome. You know, once the fat cat gets his full... You know, he's going to lay around, get lazy, takes the rest of the day off, you know. But you got to remember, for every, you know, one out of every 100 cats, you got the, you know, one fat cat, or maybe five fat cats. You know, there's always going to be a young, aggressive, hungry cat that's out there that is going to be right on your tail, okay? And you could be sitting there thinking, oh, you know, life's great, and, you know, I made my money today. You know, there's a lot of young cats out there that are hustling, they're aggressive. And, you know, in, in this industry, you know, there's, um, there's plenty of things to sell out there, guys. Plenty of things. Whether you specialize in T-shirts or, or, you know, media type stuff, CDs, whatever it may be. Just remember, you know, you don't want to be the fat cat. You want to be the young, aggressive, hungry, starving cat. That's who you want to be. You want to be that, that cat out there that's hustling, that's sitting there, that, you know, it's the homeless cat that's outside. It's running around. It's looking for food. It's, it's always in the prowl. You know, um, that's the cat you want to be, not the fat, lazy cat. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let me go check on YouTube here to see if my video is going on here. Let's see what we got, what we got, what we got. Okay, let's see. All right, what do we got here? All right, let me make sure I'm live. And I am live. Awesome. All right, so get some more coffee in me here real quick. You know, here's another topic I want to talk about. It's, you know, it's inspiration and, and being burnt out sometimes, you know. Take it for what it's worth, guys. 95% of the people out there are, are, um, are full of shit, really. They're, they're bullshitters. They lie, they hate, they steal. You know, you want to be an honest person. You you want to be an honest seller. You know, it's 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 one of those things where you know um, you gotta you, you, one when you get burnt out at this, you know, take a break from it. You know, um, whether it's a day, a week, a month, whatever you can afford to do. But um, don't get don't get discouraged with people that you know are just bringing you down. I mean, because you know people that bring you down. I mean, you don't want them around your life. You you want positive people. And, um, you know, um, find a mentor. I mean, everybody needs a mentor. Everybody needs a big brother, you know. I mean, everybody needs a big brother, a big sister, someone to look up to. Um, whether it's, you know, somebody physically around you all, all the time, or maybe it's somebody on YouTube. You know, maybe it's somebody on YouTube that inspires you that, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, I wish I, can, I, wish I could do that. I, I want to do that. I, you know, I look, I look up to what he says. He makes sense, or she makes sense, or whatever the case may be. Um, it's very important to find somebody like that because, you know, you you want to have, um, you know, you know, even if somebody you could talk to and explain to them, hey, I'm kind of struggling with this or this is that, you know, it's very important to find a mentor, find somebody you can trust, um, you know, whether it's, you know, like I said, if it's somebody like it's, what if it's, even it's your mother or your father, whoever it may be, you know, find somebody in your in, in your life that that you know you can look up to. You always got to look up to somebody. You know, you can't just say to yourself, I don't look up to anybody on my own self. You know, that's, that's a bunch of crap. Um, 
On a different topic, though, you know, track your customers' habits, guys. I mean, that's very important. I mentioned this in another video. You have to track, you know, the your selling habits. See what's selling. See what people are looking for. You know, I remember, gosh, 10, 15 years ago, you know, selling things. And, um, you know, I, I was selling baseball cards. I mean, you know, just throwing them out there. I get customers to this day that have stuck with me, you know. I mean, that's isn't that may sound crazy, but I've got I, – I built – you know, my little Mike's empire, my little voodoo vintage, right? It's just a little, little dot on the freaking big internet out there. But I stayed in touch with all my customers and uh, provide them great service. You know, I'd say, hey, you know, what are you looking for? What cards? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, anything Packer cards, whatever it may be, or anything Derek Jeter. And, you know, and they understood that I ship out fast. They get what they want. When they see the picture, they know what it is. They don't have to worry about it. And you know what? They'll spend a little more money for that personalized service. So, so understand who your customers are. Understand their habits. Um, it's very, it's very, very important for you to, to to understand that because once you understand that, you're going to succeed. You know, you can start off and you get one good client. You know, I had even uh, towards the end with eBay. You know, I uh, I had one guy. I'm not even lying. I mean, he would purchase five to six things, baseball cards, smalls. Um, from me every day, every day. This went on for three or four years, just every day him buying, buying, buying. And I turn him and say, hey, you know, I appreciate your business and everything. Um, you, know, um, but, you know, what we could do is just let me know what cards you're looking for and I'll give you a deal on it. He goes, no, man, it's worth, it's got to be worth your time too. So I'll just buy them, buy it now. You know, I mean, cards that were worth pennies. He was willing to spend, you know, $2 a card on it and he didn't have a problem with it. Um, and those are the type of people that you want to, to, to be on your team. You know, you want buyers like that because those buyers are going to pay your bills, whether it's the smalls or the bigs. You know, um, same with the T-shirts. Like for me, guys, I mean, I do a lot of T-shirts. And, you know, I, I got an email last night from somebody. Hey, man, I you know, bought this Ravens shirt, this Lifeson shirt from you. And, um, you know, my buddies, you know, or, you know, getting ready to you know, watch the playoff game next week or whatever it may be. But, uh, you know, is there any way we can get it by next week? I said, yeah, man, you know me. I'll ship it out. You know, give me two days. Give me a day. It'll be out the door. And, um, you know, they came to me first. That's the thing. You know, they could have went to the NFLstore.com or, or their local store to buy that shirt or, or that hoodie or that snapback hat. But, you know, they came to me. They know my prices are in line. They know that it's going to be fast shipping. And, and that's what you got to do in this industry. You got to get people around. You got to get customers that are willing to you know, um, to be part of your little family, really. I mean, you know, and you need guys like that. You know, you need guys and girls, buyers and sellers. I mean, it, it's very important. Um, you know, speaking of, like, football and stuff like that, guys, you got to track the trends of what's happening out here in the, in the real world. The uh, You know, right now you got football. you got the playoffs going. you got – you know, um, Patriots, you know, you got the Falcons, the 49ers, the Ravens. This is the time right now where you're going to get top dollar for these those type of items, right? I'm telling you, I've done it year after year after year. I follow it through all the sports. Now, I, I'm i a sports fan. Um, I used to be a diehard fan back in the day with a lot of things. And, you know, I just started to realize, you know, it was just like, wait a minute, you know, I'm watching these guys on screen, these millionaires. What are, what are they doing for me? Nothing. I get some. I guess I'm getting some sick enjoyment watching them play a sport, and then you know, at the end of the day, you know, it becomes a disappointment when you start following a guy and he's on steroids or you know he's beating his wife or whatever the frick frack's going on. Um, but you know, right now, if if you're coming across Patriots, Falcons, 49ers, Ravens stuff, throw them online, okay? Throw them to auction. Do whatever. Get that out there. The diehard fans that are looking right now, there's millions of people right now at work. They're sitting in front of their computer on eBay, typing in 49ers jacket, 49ers t-shirt. You know, they're going nuts. They're getting that, you know, oh, yeah, they're going to have their, 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 their football party. I mean, everybody's into this, okay? You want to be a part of this. You want to sell to that. So get into that groove. You know, when there's these teams like this in the playoffs, I mean, people start getting crazy with it. But if you can find this stuff, whether they're at your local thrift stores, if you're in an area, let's say, like Idaho, and you say, well, I go to the thrift stores, I don't find any of that stuff. Well, you know what? Maybe, you know, right now, I mean, go around and, and, and see on eBay real quick. You know, take a look. 
Um, especially when it starts to narrow down from these four teams to two teams, you get that week break before the Super Bowl. You're going to know who these two teams are. Um, and, and these are all solid teams. You, you know, and the, If you buy T-shirts right now or sweatshirts or, or whatever it is, um, if you find a wholesaler out there and you want to just pick up some items, whether they don't sell right now, they're going to sell next year or they're going to sell through the summer or whatever it may be. But that's my advice, guys, on that. Stock up on these items. Now's the time to push them. Also, too, now that hockey's back, hockey's, you know, a big, big sport, you know, and people are pissed off with the whole strike and this is that. But once that TV turns on and, and you see these players skating and your teams are out there, people are going to start buying. I mean, I can tell you right now, um, you know, all, all week when they announce that they're going to be back on, you know, I've been selling a lot of hockey stuff, you know, a lot of Blackhawks, a lot of Kings, a lot of uh, Islanders, you know, a lot of, uh, just you know, you name it, I've been selling it whether they're hats, shirts, um, doesn't matter. But, um, you know, jerseys, too. Um, same with basketball, guys. I mean, basketball's still got a huge following, you know, and um, there's a lot of people that support their team. So if you're into sports, if you're into something, you know, um, you like, you and you're used to buying things that you like, um, even if you're not into sports, this might be an avenue you need to look into, really, because um, you can make some good money at it. I made good money at it. I still do today. You know, um, I guarantee you, by today's end, I'll probably sell a bunch of uh, sports shirts. Um, but that's something just to keep in mind. Uh, let's go into the comments here, see if anything's happening. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, shout out to you, Cripple Picker. You are on. Yeah. Hey, I saw your video, bud. I, I'm glad you liked the t-shirt. It's, uh, you know, I apologize for the delay on it. Um, those are just some quick t-shirts we made up. And, um... You know, uh, the Trash Talking Treasure Show is great. Brent, shout out to you. But, uh, Curl Picker, I'm happy that it arrived to you. And, um, you know, it arrives safe and it fits and life's great. So, um, let me get out of here real quick, guys. All right, what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into some decoding of eBay. Um, I want to show some things to you guys. Um, let's see. Where did we go? Where did we go? All right, I'll show you guys a diff couple different items here, okay? Let me just make sure this is going. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yep, all right. All right, so if you go on to eBay and you look under, like, you're browsing the category for antiques, all right? <clears throat> you're going to start to see all these different categories, all right? You're going to see the, um, just like last time, you know, what other people are watching, what they're looking at, and then you're going to get the popular searches. Now, today what we're going to look up is buttons, okay? I come across buttons all the time, um, not too much in thrift stores, but there are times where I'll find bags, you know, for two bucks and it's just filled with buttons. These are good opportunities, guys. I mean, these are, uh, excuse me, guys, for one second here. I'm going to answer this message real quick. Sorry. All right, sorry about that. Just had to reply to this email here. All right, so the uh, the buttons, back on the buttons, the you know these buttons go for good money if you can find the right ones. Um, they go for good money individually if you're into sm selling smalls or if you're into selling them as bulk. You know um, what we're looking at here, the way we have it set up right now is under um, buttons and the antiques best match. Look at this huge lot of 180 antique vintage metal buttons, picture Art Deco. Okay. I'm going to show you guys something. I'm going to show you a little later, too. Remember the words mid-century, all right, and art and deco, okay? <clears throat> Look at that, $93. That's almost 50 cents a button, all right? Now, somebody could sit there and, and buy this lot, turn around, and sell these individually, okay? Here's another one, 100 buttons for baby clones, right? Baby clothes, rhinestones, glass, $28, okay? So let me just let me see how many we had on here. Right now, there's only six. Thousand active listings, okay, guys. I'm kind of trying to show you guys something new here that is is almost an untouched market, okay. You know, it's like I, I said back before in one of my other videos with the T-shirts. You know, you know, eight uh, eight months ago, nine months ago, there was you know two hundred thousand vintage T-shirts. Now there's five hundred thousand. So always be on the up and up and look for different things that are niche, okay. Here, vintage and antique huge button lot over eight hundred. You know, start looking at these keywords, 33 bucks. That may not seem like a lot. 
But if you can, I guarantee you, I've gone to estate sales, picked up bags of these for two bucks. Yeah. Here's another one. Look at these antique buttons, buckles, 15 pieces, 45 bucks. You know, the people that are buying this, they're either going to be making jewelry of this. They're using these things for lots of different things, artwork. So um, we're just going to click through some of these here. Um, you know, the, even off the buttons off dresses. Sometimes you find a piece, piece of clothing or a jacket that's really vintage and it's nice, and you, you can't move it, you know, it's, after a while, if it doesn't move, take the freaking buttons off. If the buttons look like something they can sell, then donate the coat away. You know? I mean, if you start really looking at this in terms of, there's another one, 350 uh, Victorian assorted buttons. Excuse me, 75 bucks. Okay, so those are the active listings for buttons. Now, I'm going to show you guys Let's look at the completed listings, okay? 24,000 completed listings. And I'm just going to go through here so we get an idea of what's red and what's green. Green means it sold. Red means it didn't sell, all right? So we've got a guy just throwing a button out here, 99 cents from Canada, 5 bucks. You know, um, these are good opportunities to, to make money even if you're in the smalls. You know, 99 cents, 350. And it's kind of a... It's, it's not a massive market, but you can make some money at that. If, you're, if you see the trend here looking, guys, you see here, there's two reds, one, two, three, four, five, five greens. Look at the ratio. You know, nobody's going to tell you the ratio of when you're looking on eBay and you're researching products. You have to do the math yourself. This is kind of why I have this uh, decoding of eBay. You know, it's, it's to kind of show you guys how my, my head works. And what I, when I go out and look for things, I start to see a trend. You got to find trends in items, guys. That's how you make money. Um, so we got that right there. Okay. Now let's go to the active list or the, the actual sold listings. Okay. Seven, eighteen, close to eighteen thousand have sold. All right. Do you see the difference there? Do you see that ratio that there's only six thousand online right now, but yet eighteen thousand have sold? There's a demand for it. A big, huge demand for this, guys. Yeah. So we're just browsing through. Here's the same guy tossing these to auction for a buck or two. But look at the prices. I mean, nine sixty, five dollars. You know, these are smalls, but these are good smalls. These are smalls where, when you find these, you're gonna find them in your big bags. You know, um, and no, no, you know, usually where I find these at are are estate sales where you know there was an older woman that passed away. And, you know, this is what she did. She collected buttons. Okay. You know, you're not gonna see too many men collecting buttons, but the um, Look at this, okay? Um, you know, here's another one. Coat uniform buttons. I've done a lot of these where I've picked up old army and military jackets. You know, the jackets weren't worth much. Um, what I did is I just ripped the buttons off and sold the jacket as is really cheap to blow it out. And I turned around and sold the buttons. You know, there's lots of opportunities out there, guys. And if you're looking for items to sell, you just have to know what you're looking for. You know, you have to understand what you're doing. You know, and that's my focus for today's show. So here's more buttons, you know, 10 bucks, you know, this person and I guarantee, I mean, I'm not guaranteeing what this person is. I don't know what they did or how they got it, but you know, I've sold buttons. I've got a boxes, boxes of buttons. All right. And I throw lots out there from time to time on, um, on, I give them to my wholesalers. I say, Hey, you want, want to sell some buttons for me? Want to make some money? We'll split it. You know, whatever it goes for. Um, but you're seeing here, I mean, what's today? The 15th. What is today? 14th. We're still on January 13th here. So these things are selling, guys, right? Lots, a lot of them are going on auction. Okay. We can see that there. Check out another page. Look at this. Two buttons, 20 bucks. These are good money makers because when you get these, if you buy them right, you got pennies in them. There's nothing like getting a product for pennies and selling them for 10, 20, okay? That's that's making money. They're not buying something for, you know, six dollars to sell for ten and you gotta deal with the, the shipping still, you gotta deal with the fees. That's not making money. That's called wasting time. Okay? So let's be, we're seeing the trend here. I mean, look at look what this is. I mean, we're still on the thirteenth, guys. There's there's a demand for buttons, okay? I'm telling you. All right, and I, and you know, I could sit here and I could tell you guys, you know what? Um, 
hey, uh, you know, you, I, you need to pay me for this, you know, for this information. I'm not like that. You know, maybe down the line is that something I might consider writing a book. I don't know. I don't have time in my life for that right now. You know, I, I'm, I have, you know, I'm busy trying to make money, and I'm sharing my secrets with you guys because you know what? I mean, I want everybody out there, everybody that's just trying to make a living, you know, um, provide the knowledge out there, send it out there, you know, send it for free. I mean, shit, that's what it's all about. For me, it is. Um, you know, don't get me wrong. For the people that are out there making money, giving out advice, that's great too. Love it. But um, you know, for me, that's just not my cup of tea at this point in my juncture in my life. You know, maybe maybe I'll change it tomorrow or next week or next year. Who knows? But um, I do want to share my knowledge and the way I do things, and uh, hopefully somebody out there can learn from what I'm doing. Now let's go here. We're going to do another thing here, guys. Let me just make sure we're live still. Yep, we're good. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm going to show you something else, okay? And maybe you know about this or whatever, but you know, this is something I find a lot in. Um, in garage sales at thrift stores, flea markets, and the um, it's it's something that you know what a lot of people do not think it's it's it can happen or it's true, you know um, VHS tapes guys. Okay, I know this may sound stupid, and you might say, "Oh man, you know I've got all these VHSs, I couldn't sell them." You maybe you got the wrong ones. All right, more than likely you do because if you can't sell them, but here, all right, I'm talking right about now about sealed VHS tapes. When I say it's sealed, I mean brand new, factory sealed. There's ton, tons of these out there, guys. Tons. And you'd be surprised what people are willing to pay for things. Whether, um, what I've noticed is they're, the people that are buying these, they're not buying, let's say, like Die Hard or Godfather on VHS. You know, they're, you know or, or Born on the Fourth of July. Um, and maybe they would buy it, Born on the Fourth of July sealed, if they're a big fan of Tom Cruise or whatever it may be. But... Um, a lot of these are kids' movies. These are um, instructional movies, um, rare out-of-print movies. Um, there's, a, there's a pretty good demand for this, and you can make some good money doing it. So let's get an idea here of what I'm talking about. Right now we have uh, 14,000 sealed um, listings on eBay. Yeah. Let's look at the completed listings. We got 18,000 completed listings. Okay. And this is from recent first. So nothing is sold today for sealed VHS, okay? And I'm not saying you're going to make millions of dollars doing this, you know, but when you come across one, you're going to see what I'm, you're going to, you'll know what I'm talking about. I've sold plenty over the years, anywhere from $20, you know, for, for a sealed one all the way up. So um, I think the most I, I sold one for was about 85 bucks. Okay. Now we're not seeing anything high dollar here. Nothing yet. Oh, here's one. Beyond the Black Rainbow Mondo VHS Limited Edition, 300 new sealed, 67 bucks. Yeah. Here, Godfather trilogy. You know, if you remember like I do, when VHS first came out, these things were expensive, but they, they don't hold their value like they do, like other items do today. You know, it's a shame. I mean, we people moved on to different formats. You know, went from VHS to you know to DVD and. You know, there's, nobody's buying VHS anymore um, in terms of the big popular brand new movies. They're not even putting them on VHS. But there's a lot of good classics out there, and people are looking for them, okay? You know, here, everything, every, everything you always wanted to know about sex from Woody Allen, sealed tape, nine bucks, okay? You find them in a thrift store for a quarter sometimes. That's good profit. There's, these are smalls. You're not going to get rich doing this, but... You know, what killed the Mega Beast VHS 2002 sealed, all right? Now, we're going to go back into the actual sold listings, okay? Okay, dollar here. I mean, here, 99 cents, throw an auction, free shipping. That doesn't always work, guys. I'm telling you, don't get caught up in this mix here because you're going to get burned, okay? You're going to get burned, and next thing you know, you're going to look at it and go, shit, I, yeah, I sold a bunch of stuff. I packed a bunch of stuff. I spent 10 hours doing it. And, uh, oh, my God, I didn't make any money. Actually, I spent money. I lost money. But here we go, all right? Look at him. Don Cherry, rock him, 20 bucks, okay? Nadia, 25 bucks. Okay? See, like, you're not, like, point break. These big major motion picture films, they're not going to do super well. You're going to make a little money off them, but... It's the obscure ones, especially this one, Song of the South. If you don't know what that is, go check it out. 
if you find one of those, it, it's it's like holding uh, you know a fifty, a twenty-five to fifty-dollar bill in your hand. So we're just going through the recent ones here. I mean, we're still on the thirteenth. Um, here, VHS Disney ones. If you find some good D Disney sealed ones, twelve bucks. Look at this, twelve bucks. Godfather sealed trilogy, thirteen dollars. You know, um, and not just this for eBay, guys, but for Amazon. All right, look at this. All right, you, you, I see these all the time. I've I buy these every time I see them. Every time you see cassette tapes, VHS tapes are sealed. Buy them. Look at this. Twenty-five new Panasonic factory sealed D VHS tapes, two hundred and sixty dollars. Here, the Docks of New York VHS. Rare, brand new, sealed, fifteen bucks. Okay, Debbie Siebers, slim in six phase two. People will spend money on exercise videos. All right, so you're getting the idea here. Now let's go to, let's look at the higher end ones that have that have sold. Okay, price plus shipping, highest first. There we go, guys. You see what I'm talking about here with the VCR tapes, these DVHSs. Yeah, okay. here, look at this, WWF videos. See that? See this? Sealed, three hundred bucks. Survivor Series, nineteen ninety five, WWF, two hundred bucks. Obscure ones, big box horror VHS, you know, Elvira, two hundred bucks. Yeah, a lot, a lot of horror movies. They're out of print. They're never going to be on DVD, guys. So people out there that are into these films. You know, they'll, they'll spend the money here, especially, uh, you know, rare uh, music ones. All right, we'll keep flipping here through, and I don't know this guy, I don't know how that get him there, but <clears throat> as you can see, these the JVCs, sealed DVHSs they sell, got wrestling. You got to be really open-minded when you're a picker. You just can't focus on what you're so used to picking, because you know what? You got to start selling. As a picker, you got to be well-rounded, and you got to sell different types of items. If you're stuck selling the same thing, you're getting a rut. You're gonna you're gonna burn out. I'm telling you, you're gonna burn out. Okay. All right. Let's see. Yeah. Here. Look at this. New factory sealed songs of the South. Eighty-five dollars. You'll get that all day long. Okay. Here, if you, I guarantee you guys, go to your go to the thrift stores right now. Maybe they're not sealed, but I guarantee you, if you if you type in this one, this WWF in your house, nineteen ninety five. All right, hundred and eighty dollars. All right, I guarantee you, if you had this not sealed, you could probably get twenty thirty bucks for it. It's all about the supply and demand. People are people that are shopping online. I'm not calling them lazy, but it's a convenience. And if you had like, if nobody has this. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys VHS on online. This guy is one of the people that has it. Look what he got for it. Seventy-five dollars. All right. So you guys are seeing what I'm talking about here. All right. Do your homework. Look at these types of things. Here, chips. Brand new factory sealed. Seventy bucks. Chips. Here, Star Wars original theatrical version sealed. You know where that's going? It's some nut, some Star Wars nut that has to have everything. Everything Star Wars. Here, the old box sets with the CDs and the VHSs. Those sell. You know, God, I remember when this came out. I mean, I think this was like 150 bucks. You know, and it's it's at half its value. You know, there's a lot of items out there that hold their value. Especially collectible ones with 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 uh, good subject matter. So we're you're, you're seeing the phase here. Look at these the DVHSs, guys. I picked up. I'll give you. I'll just give you a heads up too. Um, I picked up about fifty of these last night at a thrift store. All right. I went on a Sunday an hour before they closed. They were stocking like a mother trucker, and um, I scored a lot of crazy things that. If I went on Monday morning, I guarantee they would have been gone because there's somebody else that swings through there on Sundays, right before they close. It was there was maybe me and I would say four other people in the store. Um, 
So we're getting the idea here. Sealed VHSs, how to print VHS tapes. Look them up. If you got your phone when you're running around, just, you know, there's a lot of software out there, guys, where you can just scan it in and you can see what these things are worth. So um, that's to keep you in mind. It bounce out of here, guys. And uh, let's see what we got, what we got, what we got. Let me go into the comments, guys. If you guys have any comments for me, leave some comments here. This will make the show flow better. Um, what do we got? What do we got? Is this is actually is my video been blurry like this the whole time, guys? Let me know. Somebody let me know. Holy cow, this looks blurry. Wow. Um, Pick and Profit says, what I learned from eBay, everything sells. Oh, let me go back, 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 back. What I learned from eBay, everything sells in mixed bulk lots. Anything. Yeah, I mean, people buy bulk lots, um, whether they're collectors or they're people that are, um, you know, they're, they're looking to flip. There's a lot of flippers, a lot of virtual pickers on eBay. I'm one of them. Um, Pick and Profit says, I have much better success selling VHS on Amazon than eBay personally. I agree. I I don't use eBay anymore, so that tells you what I think about eBay. Um, Amazon, I can tell you right now, I've sold more on Amazon in terms of media-wise, like VHS, CD, books, DVDs, than I ever, ever have on, um, on eBay. I mean, period. You know, um, there's just more traffic there, guys. There's th those types of people are looking for those items on Amazon. You know, um, and trust me, I had a large volume store on eBay with tons and tons of stuff like that and that they just weren't selling you know and then when I when I started doing Amazon I would throw those items on there and I'm within hours boom sold I'm like oh my god this is crazy um, northern picker says uh, northern picker says uh, look for these two I find these at estate sales especially in high-end neighborhoods they price these so low because they don't know their value Sony metal yes yes the cassette tapes seal that's the other thing too all those will sell. The Sony ones, I mean, there's a lot of people that use those. Uh, matter of fact, I picked up about 12 of those yesterday um, at the thrift store. And, um, you know, I, I see them all over the place. And people just think, oh, well, it's a cassette tape. You know, um, well, you get them a lot of garage sales where, um, you know, they're, they're cleaning out their attic or their basement or their garage. And they, they don't even think twice about it. They throw them out there. You know, they, a lot of times you can say, well, how much do you want for the box or the two of them? And, you know, a lot of times they'll, they'll just give them away. You know, for pennies. So, so um, good point there, Northern Picker. Uh, Picking profits. Uh, brand new black VHS sell well in lots too. Yeah, lots of VHSs, guys. Um, you know, I wouldn't try to sell the brand new ones um, in, in, in just you know one offs. I mean, you could try, but my luck's always been with um, with lots there. Um, yeah, California Picker says just picked up a Sony VHS DVD player combo for ten dollars. They they do well too. Yeah. I have excellent luck with those um, on Craigslist. Uh, I don't like to deal with electronics online in terms of shipping them to like um, different areas. Let's see here. Uh, sorry, guys. Um, with electronics and stuff like that, like record players, cassette tapes. Uh, tapes. Actually, I got a guy coming today to get um, two uh, Sony cassette decks. I have. Um, you know, he's going to pay thirty-five dollars a piece for them. You know, these 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 were two three hundred dollar units back in the day. So yeah. Uh, Good point out there, California Picker. Uh, Northern Picker, video is fine. Just went out of focus when switching from eBay. Looks good now. Okay, good. Yeah, I just I, I switched back there and I saw that and I wasn't too sure. Um, <clears throat> so that was my decoding of eBay with those antique buttons, sealed VHSs. Hope you guys learned something there. The other thing I want to talk about is you know patience, guys. Um, especially if you're doing like how I do it. Where you know I list the items and it's it's a buy it now format. It's there. There's no auctions. There's no bidding. Sometimes things take time and, and have patience with that. If you don't have patience, you know, as a picker, as a flipper, as a reseller, um, you're you're not going to be successful in this industry. You're just not, right? Um, you're not going to get everything today or tomorrow. That's not how it works. I'm telling you, I've done a long time. Um, you put the work in and you're going to start seeing things pop. You know, for prices that you would never imagine. So. So keep that in mind. You know, um, here's something I wanted to kind of talk about too. It, it's almost kind of like a marketing type strategy with um, um, with blogging and websites and PayPal. Okay, for those of you that don't know, you know, PayPal. If you go into their merchant section, you know, they have an option for. Um, it's for uh, HTML coding. Um, 
for um, add to to cart uh, purchase now buttons for that you can use for your website. So you, when you create your own website, you know you can um, add these features or um, or whatever it may be. But you know what I've used these for, and I'm going to tell you something. If you go to like Blogger.com or find some of these bigger bloggers, you know they there's the search engines are picking these guys up, and you know when you've got a really successful blog website um, that's got great keywords and you're being you're brought up on the first or second page of Google, you can do a lot of damage in terms of um, not saying damage, but you're going to be recognized pretty fast. And um, this is something that's been successful for me, you know, where I'll blog about something and um, I'll have a product down there. They're typically um, brand new products, what from just my experience. But I'll have my blog, and it's just a blog, like I said, blogger. It's not going to have, it's, there's no shopping cart feature in it. It's not a website. It's just a blog. And what I'll do is I'll put a picture of an item and um, have a description, blah, 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 blah. And then I'll go into PayPal and, um, you know, customize my HTML code for that product. And then um, what I do is I create it, copy the HTML, slap it into my blog. And it, now under my picture, it says buy it now. And, um, you know, somebody can go in there and click buy it now and pay me right through PayPal. And there's no eBay fees. There's no Amazon fees. And you know what? That's not even having your own, like, you know, um, e-commerce website. You know, it's just a, a way to get extra traffic, a way to sell extra things. I've done it um, for years now, and it's been great. I mean, especially with a lot of the T-shirts I do. You know, I, I created a blog about, uh, what shirt was that? Um, it was kind of like a, like a Mardi Gras type of, feeling shirt and um, really cool design and I had it on one of my blogs and uh, you know I would just talk about different shirts and different things and you know I just I had to took a picture of the shirt threw it on there and said you know what you, you know you can customize these HTML buy it now codes so when somebody clicks buy it now they can they can select their size um, or, or your variant or whatever it is so so keep that in mind and it's just a different way a different revenue to bring money into you um, to your business it's very important to have different avenues. So, so if you don't know anything about that, go take a look at that. It's um, it's easy. The only fee you're going to incur is PayPal. And um, you know, like I said, you're not going to make millions doing it, but it's just another source of way for you to make money. Um, so we talked on that. I'm going to go back to um, the uh, the screen share here, guys. All right, because I want to show you something here. And uh, I'm not sure if everybody is aware of what this is, but I've been slam dunking with it, and I've been doing it for a while. Um, I want to show you guys and educate you guys on mid-century modern furniture, okay? I'm on a website called thrivefurniture.com. And, um, you know, it's got the nice flash here. I'm trying to give you guys, if you guys can see, let me just go back here and make sure this is on. Yep, all right. All right, is this going to flash here of what the products they sell here? And these are all brand new, retro, that whole vintage mid-century 50s, 40s, 60s look. You know, this is right now super popular, okay, um, especially here in Chicago. I've sold these to people that have lots of money. Uh, I just sold a piece um, over the weekend to a doctor, okay. And um, I'm going to show you guys what these things sell for brand new. Okay, look at this. Uh, Taylor sectional thirty two hundred dollars for this. Okay, now now look at this vibe, guys. Okay, because you will find these in thrift stores, or estate sales, or garage sales. Look at the vibe of what I'm talking about here. When you start to realize the vibe, when what I'm saying is, and I just picked this company out just for because they had this flash here. But look at look at the legs. Look at the look. All right, um, this is hot right now, and people will spend money. Now you saw that couch right there, thirty one hundred dollars, brand new, blah blah blah. Okay, you can find costs like that, and trust me, it happens every day. All right, um, I'd sell costs like that where I get them for eight, ten bucks. I'd let them out of the thrift store, and to a doctor that's looking at that, going, okay, thirty two dollars. All right, I put mine out there for eight hundred. It might not sell tomorrow or that day, but I guarantee it's it sells. They sell left and right. This is great for Craigslisting. Um, you know, if, if you want to do stuff like this, I see stuff like this sell all the time on eBay. But let's let's go into some of the categories here, guys. All right, um, and I'm just showing you here. Here's their best sellers. You know, this is why you got to research some of these other companies that are online. Okay, Kennedy Chair. All right, it's got that throwback look. Look at how the look look at look at the art on this. Okay, this is you got to pay attention. 
Kennedy chair, 900 bucks. I've come across these chairs. My buddies come across these chairs. You know, um, we, we find these things, and you know what? So pickers that are out there, when they're in the thrift store, they're gone. When you, when you see one, you better pick it up now because it's going to be gone. It'll be gone if you try to come back in an hour or two. They, they sell like hotcakes. So, for example, you got that chair for 900 brand new, all right? <clears throat> when you find these chairs, you're going to see them at thrift stores, 20 30 bucks. So then some thrift stores might actually know what they have, um, and they might be 100 So what? Buy for 100 Put a price tag of 400 on it. You're going to sell it. These sofas, look at the looks of these sofas, guys. Okay? These are probably in your grandparents' house, you know, um, or in their basement or in their bar or their living room. All right, this look. You see the slanted legs? Look at the legs. Look at the credenza on this thing, okay? Let me, let me open this up. Let me zoom in a little better. See this credenza? I sell tons of credenzas, okay? I, I sell credenzas that um, aren't credenzas. They're actually dressing um, uh, bedroom um, dressers with mirrors. I take the mirrors off and I sell the dresser, you know? Um, look at this. This is the look. People, look at this, $2,800. You may say to yourself, oh, nobody buys that. People buy this every day. People have money. You know, people want this look. You know, a lot of people in Chicago, out here in Chicago, this is where I'm, the clientele are. And then you got some of these people that, you know, that live in these, these palatial mansions and stuff like that. This is the look. You know, you got Susie Homemaker that sits at home all day. And I can't tell you how many phone calls I get from Susie Homemakers that call, oh, I really love that piece. I need to come and take a look at it at your shop you know, um, to make sure it fits well and, you know, whatever, blah, 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 give me the money, all right? But when they, this is what they're seeing in these magazines, 2,900, okay? If you could sell a piece like that for 500, they're going to be thrilled to death, all right? So let's go look at some chairs, guys, okay? Just do your homework. Look at sites like this. The keywords is mid-century modern, all right, furniture, and have keywords like Art Deco, stuff like this. Look at these, all right? Okay? And I can go on for five, six hours about this type of product, this type of furniture, this type of look. I just wanted to quickly show you guys some things where you can, if you spot these, um, these are easy money. And, and this is what I'm saying, you know, in terms of, you know, somebody asked me their day, well, Mike, why would you have a storage locker if you got uh, a shop? Well, my shop's full. And, uh, you know, I don't want to put so much shit in my shop that I have storage lockers for items like this, for barbecue grills, for things that I know will sell. And I don't have a problem spending my, my 100 bucks a month to store this shit there. You know, beats me saving it and putting it in my garage. So this is the kind of stuff you want to look for, guys, especially when you're seeing chairs. I mean, these are fucking chairs, $1,700. I'm not crazy, dude, when I say this either. Uh, let's look at some credenzas. Yeah? This credenza right here, all right. You'll see this very, very. You'll, if you're if you're hunting and you're thrifting and you're scouting around, you will see this. Okay, you'll start knowing the names, and uh, you know made it made of European steam beach veneer. Uh, you know, look at this, seventeen hundred dollars. I've sold plenty of these over the years for five, six hundred that I've gotten for fifty bucks, twenty bucks. You, know, you can scout these out. I do. This is how I scout them out. I go to EstateSales.net. You know, it's an awesome resource, awesome tool to to see what you're going to do. Um, you, you can see the furniture on there. They show it to you. You know, and you know, you run over there and try to get it. You know, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of estate sale people. They know this. This ain't nothing new. Um, but look at the oddball tables. You know, you got to look at these just different things, guys. All right. You know, um, you start finding this stuff. You know, these, these are the bigs. These are the home runs I'm talking about. These aren't these little smalls. These are home runs. You know, imagine selling two or three of these a week at five, six hours a pop. Yeah, then you're making money. Yeah, just, just start researching this. Take a look at it. Um, I hope that you guys um, appreciate the information I'm giving out here. Um, like I said, leave some comments here, guys. I'm going to go back here. A couple more things before I, I bounce out of here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I have one more cigarette here, and uh, you know, leave some comments. If you have any questions, let me know. Gonna get some coffee in me here. 
but yeah, the mid -century, mid century modern furniture. Just take a look at it. In um, if that's something you're interested in, it's something you want to learn about. You, you know, to people that are out there that are that that have this stuff and you've been selling this, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but the people that haven't, it, it'd be something very lucrative for you to look into, especially when you get these pieces really, really cheap. Um, let's move on here to something. Reality TV, guys. It's a fun, it's a joke, all right. Um, you know, there's there's shows now all over the place about treasure hunting and picking and and um, you know reselling stuff like that. But you got to ask yourself. And I'm going to take for example Pawn Stars and Pickers. Do you think they make all their money, or or the bulk of their money, selling the items that they're getting? I have reason to believe that. Um, you know, they, they obviously get paid for the TV show and this is that, but, you know, they're an attraction, okay? They're like um, Graceland. They're like Disneyland, okay? Um, you know, I, I've, I've been to both of those places and um, to their storefronts and stuff like that, and you walk into them, and they're kind of like museums, okay, where you walk in there and you see the pieces and you go, oh, wow, yeah, and you look at the price and say, oh, shit, okay? Yeah, and you can negotiate them or whatever, you know, just like anything else in life. But that you know how they're making all their money. You know, I, I saw freaking Chum Lee the other day driving around in the uh, what was it, a Maserati. You know, nice nice car. I mean, yeah, shit. I mean, he's, he's on TV. He's, he's a rock star. Um, but do you know how much money he's made off of just him selling his, his T-shirt? This is Chum Lee on it. Okay, it's about the novelty item, guys. When people go into Pawn Stars or Pickers. You know, they want a memory. They want something to remind them that they were there. And they want something to show and tell people. And you know what they're buying? They're buying the little knickknacks. They're buying the t-shirts, okay? That's how Pawn Stars and Pickers are making big bucks is off those items, okay? Um, don't get me wrong. They're selling the shit, too. They're, they're selling their picks. They're, they're the stuff that people bring in and, 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 uh, and flip it, you know. But the, the bulk of their money is coming from... Their, you know, their success, their their success of being a, t a television star. So, uh, so keep that in mind. I mean, it's not like they're, you know, selling twenty thousand dollar astronaut helmets. Okay, it's not like they're doing that every day. But I guarantee you, they're probably selling five six thousand dollars of t shirts every day. You know, um, if you don't if you don't know what I'm talking about, go take a look into it. Um, Go back here. You know, um, you know. For me, we're gonna go back on me for a second here and kind of what I've, I've got going on. Sales for me have spiked. Okay, uh, this weekend just blew up. All right, Sunday. I mean, it, my every two minutes it seemed like my phone boop sold, boop sold, sold stuff. At the flea market sold, sold. You know, um, people are getting back in the game now. You know, people got worn out. Um, from the holidays, they took a break from buying because they were buying for freaking months. Um, so, you know, I don't know how you guys are doing with sales out there, comment out there, um, but things are really picking up for me. Um, you know, on Amazon, I'm for through some wholesale stuff from the flea market, from Craigslist. Just sell, 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 sell. Um, uh, also, I picked up a ton of stuff yesterday um, at uh, one estate sale, uh, the flea market. And uh, at the thrift store, just picked up a good quality stuff, you know. It's out there. Um, I paid a lot of bills this weekend um, on, on, uh, on some stuff I needed to pay. You know, still short on some stuff. Still, still got to come up. Uh, you know, that's how, that's how it is when you're when you're doing it full time. You know, there's always a bill. You know, um, there's always a bill to pay, and um, it's it's a cycle. You, you're never going to have all your bills paid. <laughs> you know, you're always going to have responsibilities. Um, so, so keep that in mind. You know, you may have a good month, one month, and say, "Oh shit, I can, I can take a little bit of that extra money and you know do something nice." So that's great. Yeah, do that. But you know, remember, you're not getting a paycheck from anybody. There's, there's nobody signing a paycheck to you. All right, this is you making the paycheck. This is you making a living. You're your own boss. Um, so we're gonna go into some comments here, guys. And um, let's see what we got going on. All right, where are we? Uh, blah, 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 blah. There we go. Let me go back, 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 back. 
Hey, Warwick Warrior, what's up, Paul? Uh, looks uh, what's happening to you, buddy? Looks like you had, I watched your video. You had some good pickups there, man. Um, looks like you're pretty busy. What's up, Juan Santana? Mike just got the tea. Thanks. Hey, no problem, man. Um, you know, like I said, I apologize for the delay on that. Um, but uh, hopefully, you could sport that and um, have some fun with that one there. Uh, Warwick Warrior says, "Fucking chairs, yeah, chairs, chairs, chairs." Picking profits, laugh a lot. Uh, all the cool stuff that I've never seen around here for a reasonable price. Salvation Army is a good place, though. They're always affordable for what I've seen. Yeah, I. Salvation Army is my little honey hole, man. Um, they don't have. It's not like a Savers where you know or Goodwill where they've got people that are sitting there and they're flashing, you know, freaking their their scanners at things at the barcodes. They know what the shit's worth over there, man. You know, a lot of times they, you know. Like especially Goodwill, they sell their stuff on online. I mean, go just go to shopgoodwill.com. Look how many Goodwill stores in the United States are selling on that website. Um, and you think, you know, some when they have quality products, they put a little bit out in the store to tease you. But um, you know, you're gonna have a better luck going to Salvation Army, some independent stores. They uh, they just want to blow the shit out, you know, really. Um, yeah, Juan Santana says no. They make their money with the t-shirts. Yeah, that's that's where they make their money, man. I mean, you know, if Pawn Stars pickers, if you think I'm crazy, I'm not. Um, excuse me. You know, Northern Pickers says I hate TV in general. The shows suck and don't tell you the whole truth of how they really make money. Exactly. And that's what fools people because people sit there and say, "Oh shit, I'm gonna quit my job. I'm gonna be a picker. I'm gonna run around, do this and that." And um, you know, it's like anything in life, man. You you, you, have, you have to have the knowledge. And the power to to do what you know, um, to understand what you're doing. You just can't jump into something. You can, I mean, you can jump into something and learn. That's the way I learned. But uh, you know, there's a lot of um, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs. But uh, you're never going to learn from something on a TV show. You're never. You know, um, at least I had never had. I don't know. Maybe I learned freaking how to solve murder crimes watching freaking <laughs> NYPD Blue or Law and Order. I don't know. But what, what am I going to do with that? Um, Go back to some comments. Uh, well, shout out to you, Highland Picker. What's up? Yeah, your package went out the door. Uh, I think it was Friday or something like that, so be on the lookout for that. Um, and for some reason, Highland Picker, I thought you were in Indiana. I don't know. I might get you confused with somebody else, but uh, your package is on its way. It's probably on a truck right now to California. Um, that is very true about the Chumley shirts. I went to Vegas and went to the store, and no one was buying the goods, just the Chumley shirts and tons of them. The shirts were all of the store. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. They don't have 50, 60 different designs for some crazy reason, right? You know, they're, um, you know, they're making the money off of, you know, the, uh, the, the amusement. You know, it's, it's like going to Disneyland. I want a Disney shirt. I want a Mickey Mouse shirt. Yeah. Okay, here you go, kid. $30 later, you know. Um, so, so keep that in mind. I wanted to kind of ex not expose that, but you know, let people know that, you know, they're not out there freaking selling millions of dollars worth of shit every day. I mean, they're selling a lot. Don't get me wrong, they sell their stuff, but they're making the bulk of their money off of, uh, you know, the, the amusement factor. Um, Helen Picker says, she, you know, uh, she, I don't really ever watch TV. Yeah, same here, right? You know, that's that what I was going to end the show with here, and we'll go on, on a different subject there. Um, Warwick Warriors has got my tees too. Thanks. Well, yeah, that got there quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy what I sent you there, Paul. There's another package going out to you too because I had a uh, an, um, a couple shirts on back order and they just they haven't came through. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, hope you enjoy what I sent you there, buddy. The um, Juan Santana look at American Chopper with huge t-shirt store. Yeah, I mean, shit. I mean, look at that. Look at these. Look at these reality TV shows. And then, you know, when you're in a thrift store, you'll find these shirts. I mean, you'll see them all the time. I don't pick them up. I don't know. Maybe I should. Maybe, maybe in twenty years from now it'll be worth something. But um, I can tell you, I I was doing it. I mean, you could still sell them, those type of T-shirts. I I did really well with like back in the day with Sopranos. Um, I'd find anything Sopranos, man. It was it was hot. So it was just boom, 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 boom. It would sell, sell, sell. But um, you know the uh, you know it, it's 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 like anything. You know, it's subject matter. Oh. Uh, Hey, well, shout out to you, Mr. Retro Josh. What's happening? Thanks for joining me live. Mr. Sadie123, how's it hanging? Morning, Mike. Tabletop Art Deco radios as well. Just bought one of the auction for 45 flipped for 175 
Profit, yeah, sells fast. Yeah, that stuff, I mean, it, it radio sell, man. I'm telling you, man. I, I've got actually, I should probably make a video on it. I just, and i got to go to this estate sometime this week. i got a, a boatload of radios, um, some wicked, vintage, cool-looking ones, man. And um, i got a buddy of mine that, um, you know, I'm not that mechanical. And, you know, um, I repurpose a lot of things, but at the same time, with electronics and stuff like that, I'm not super good at it. So i got a buddy of mine who can, you know, he likes playing around with freaking electronics and he'll fix things. Um, <clears throat> I got this awesome piece, right, that I pulled out of an industrial warehouse that uh, went out of business. They were auctioning everything in there, and um, I bought a bunch of granite and you know, I got a bunch of tile and stuff like that because um, I used to be in the granite industry. And the company went out of business, um, but uh, there was uh, everybody that was at the auction were granite people, and. Um, you know, people were buying all the granite, this is that, the machines, and, you know, there was a lot of um, office supply stuff, a lot of just 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 plain old Jane business stuff that I was picking up on because nobody was buying it. Nobody was bidding on it. And uh, they were selling everything in this warehouse, and there was an awesome time clock from this warehouse from, like, the 1940s. Gorgeous steel, big box, and um, it, it, it had, like, an alarm on it. It was really cool off the find a picture of it, but I, I ended up selling it, man, I made big bucks on it, but the, um, it was just in a box, and they, they said, you know, how much, two bucks, two bucks, two bucks, I said, yeah, I'm in, I'm in, call me in, they were looking at me like, why is this guy buying junk, well, I had my buddy that, you know, fixes clocks and, and stuff like that, he took a look at it, something was wrong with it, we, we uh, rewired it, and uh, I sold it for, man, four or five hundred bucks, so, um, there's stuff like that all the, out there all the time, guys, um, Scott's Garage Sales says, Goodwill is the best thrift store here in Atlanta. Salvation Army prices are much higher. Yeah, depends across, you know, the United States, you know, really. I mean, it's, I, I've been in some areas, too, where some Salvation Armies are just completely out, outrageous in price, and the Goodwills are competing. Um, you know, their prices are lower. But out here in Illinois, I mean, Goodwills are just crazy. I mean, I, I mean, like, the only thing I can find at Goodwills are, are a lot of the brand new items, and um, you're not going to make a lot of money out of them when you can find them brand new in the box. Um, but usually what I do that with Goodwill is I'll find hats, T-shirts, um, books, CDs, stuff like that that's reasonable. And that's, that's kind of what I do here. Um, let's see what we got here. So I'm going to give you guys a couple more seconds to make some comments. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Northern Picker, you will not buy your education in this business by watching TV. It just won't happen. You'll be frustrated and will not last long. You have got to get out there and do it. Learn from others that do it. Exactly. Right on, brother. Right on. You know, you, you just can't learn from the TV. Uh, Juan Santana, I used to make tea for my cars on them for free advertising. I used to make uh, T-shirts. Is that what you're saying there, Juan? Mustang 5.0. Yeah, I mean, you know, Juan did good with his uh, car parts there. He knows what he's talking about. Um, Pick and Profit says I've had great success with success with 70s and 80s clock radios, but the ones that go for the most have battery backups. Can get 30ish for them. Pick them up for a few bucks. Yeah, definitely. Um, I can tell you, uh, my buddy that fixes clocks, he does a um, uh, he he does a killing. On, uh, that's what he does full time. It's just repairs clocks, and uh, he does really, really well, man. Really, really well. So if you see old uh, car clocks, I have a source for that. If you get them really cheap, he'll pay you. He's really, really, really reasonable. He'll pay you good money for them. Um, whether you're gonna want him to just uh, fix them for you or just you want to sell them cheap, I mean, he he goes, he goes crazy with that. And he's got shit tons. Um, Alan Picker says, I think the reason why people buy the Chumley shirts is because it actually has the name of the show in Las Vegas on it. If you buy something else in the store, it's just an item with no visual story. Yeah. I mean, that's why you see a lot of, like, the Hard Rock Cafe shirts. You know, um, you just see that. People want that little souvenir. They, they want that, you know, when they come back home and they're wearing that shirt and people, you know, they're going to get comments. Oh, did you go to Las Vegas? Yeah, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, people, it's what it is. Um yeah, Highland Picker says, Chumley should tell a story of where you've been, the item doesn't. Exactly, exactly. Um, so I want to talk about um, Thursday, uh, my resellers roundtable. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed the last, the first episode of that. 
Um, we're going to do it again this Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Time. It will not be as long as that last one, three hours. It's going to be more of an hour or so, give or take. Um, we're going to have some, uh, some of the guests that were on um, previously. They'll be on. Um, we're going to have some new guests, too. So if you want to be on that show and you want to play what it's worth, um, you want to talk about real-world scenarios, you want to talk about picking and reselling, shoot me a private message. Um, I've got a lot of requests, and uh, we're going to we're gonna have another new guest on this Thursday. Once I finalize that, I will probably put out a video and mention who's going to be stopping by. Um, but yeah, it's you know it, it's a show. It's it's you know just to kind of hang out and shoot the shit, play the game, what it's worth. See see what we all know. See what we can learn from it, and um, you know get some good uh, interaction between the crowd, the commenters, the people watching, and you know go into just other topics. You know like what's what's going on in the world, what's going on with life. You know just shoot the shit. So um, yeah, and uh, and remember guys. Juan Santana's the man to beat, okay? You know, Biggie up there in Miami, man. He's, he's the guy right now, so somebody's got to knock him off. I mean, he could, you know, he might go on a run here, guys, so we, somebody's got to dethrone him, okay? Um, so I'll look here if you guys have any other comments, and uh, if not, I'm going to boogie out. Make sure the coffee's getting a little low. But, uh, yeah, that, to end it out, and it's funny that the comments came out that way. You know, this was the way I was just going to end it, guys, was, um, you know, turn off your TV. You know, go pick, list, sell, you know, make money, you know. Turn on that TV off. It's, it, I mean, yeah, it's, it's okay for, you know, 20, 30 minutes before you go to bed or whatever, but, I mean, I don't know. you got to understand, you know, there's a lot of lies on TV. There's a lot of uh, things that it just, it's there to brainwash you. It's there to, you know, make you feel good, you know. Um, I don't know. Let me, you watch Honey Boo Boo. What? What is? What is that? Honey Boo Boo. I don't know. Um, you know, I. Me, I'm. I'm more of. A, when I do watch TV, it's like a National Geographic type thing or History Channel. I want to learn something or try to learn something uh, or see something. Um, but but turn the TV off. You know, um, if you're watching the show, you know, just uh, life's short. You know, you want to accomplish as much as you can for as long as you keep, for as long as you're living. You know, I mean, who knows? You might be gone tomorrow. I might be gone this afternoon. You know, live life to your fullest. You know, turn the TV off. Do something. Find a hobby. Buy, buy flips. Resell. Do what I do. I don't know. Um, do whatever makes you happy. You know, that's that, that's my, my my big thing there. You know, you want to be happy. You, you wanna you wanna go to bed at night knowing you've done the best you can. You know, and I, and I go back to my you know setting goals. When you set these goals and everything, you wanna uh, you know you, you want to accomplish these goals. And when you accomplish these goals, you'll feel so good inside. You start setting up new goals, and it just goes on and on and on, and you just get this excitement of like, God, I accomplished something today. I, I accomplished that goal, you know, and, and you guys can do it. I'm telling you. It's, you know, I mean, uh, I'm just the average guy over here, man. Look at me. You know, morning cup of Joe. We're in the 1980s. You know, what is this? Well, the cost, you know. Freaking just throwback, dude. But um, I'm going to look at the comments here, guys, and then I'm going to skedaddles. Um, yeah, Juan, Tan Juan Santana says, I'm still the champ. Yo, Andrew! Andrew! Yeah, he's he's the man right now, man. Somebody's gonna <laughs> knock him off his freaking throne. Uh, KT four seven one five zero. Copy, copy, good brother. Copy, copy. Come in. Uh, what's uh, what's happening? Thanks for joining me. Hi, Mike. Yeah, I just picked uh, a nineteen sixty four Night Star Roma radio. Oh yeah, those are cool. Even broken ones bring good dough on eBay. Yeah, but even broken radios, like 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 KT says over here, man. I it, they sell. You know, just advertise it that way. Um, advertise it, say, hey, it does not work. I don't know if it can be fixed. You know, if, or if it works, mention that. Um, you know, if you if it, if it works, if any electronic piece works, my best advice out there is is create a small video if you can. I mean, now today with the phones and cameras, I mean, just shoot a quick video, put it on you know eBay or your website or whatever. Maybe show people it's working, and that you know extra two three minutes doing that. Is a big difference. Somebody's gonna go on there and say, "Oh, wow, yeah, look at how that." Um, you know, like I just sold a record player the other day that was um, a 1960s, nice chromed out. It was uh, wasn't a big high end one. Uh, I forgot the name of that maker. Then I think it was Lloyd's or something, some something like that. But it had the nice chrome look, the nice classy modern. You know, just looks just looked badass. And then what even looked better is at night when you turned it on, it had that indigo. Indigo, like fluorescent light, that just—I mean, it looked nice, man. I, you know, um, I almost wanted to keep it, but uh, I've got too many record players. But the, um, 
you know, I could see I could see myself sitting in a chair, smoking a cigarette, drinking some wine or beer, and I got the record player going there, you know. And you know, for 60, 70 bucks, the guy bought it. I mean, he's gonna enjoy it, you know. He's you know, he's gonna sit there and say, you know what, man, let me I got my old records, or maybe he's he's new in the records or whatever it is. But um look into that too, guys. I have a lot of young kids, a lot of college kids that buy record players off me. Um, because they know they can go to the thrift stores and um you know, instead of buying a song on iTunes for a dollar pop, you know, they'd rather go hunt and they find records. I was standing next to a couple of you last night at the thrift store, and we were looking through records, and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, he was bullshitting with me, and I said, hey, dude, uh, you got a record player? Yeah, he's like, yeah, man. He's like, I just got one last month, and, you know, um, I just love digging through these stores to find the records, and I'm like, yeah, man, that's what it's all about, you know? It's, you know, I mean, you, you know, you spend, you know, 25 cents to get a record, and you get the whole record there. You know, and you can open up the record. They got the lyrics in there. I mean, they don't have that anymore. You know, that's it's, it's gone. You're getting something for your money. You know, when you're doing iTunes or whatever it may be, and you're downloading this, what are you getting? You know, you're not getting a you're not getting a CD. You're not getting anything material. It's it's all just re you know virtual, I guess. Um, so uh, yeah, that's my little shout out here. Let me see a couple more comments here, and I'm a I'll boogie on out. Uh, Northern Picker says, "Yep." Shut that TV down and do something with your life. Amen, brother. Yeah, you know, you know, go out there, just turn it off. You know, turn it off, man. Um, especially if you have kids, you know, you know moderate what they're doing. Um, don't let them sit out there and just veg and sit there on SpongeBob, 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 Dora, Dora. Uh, you know what I mean? They're just, it's not going to do them any good. You know, my kids, it's like, hey, you got, you know, an hour here to watch TV, that's fine. Then you're reading a book or doing something else or go play outside, do whatever. And I know it's harder in the in the, in the winter time. You know the um, you got uh, you know you're stuck inside, man. You're, you're stuck inside and you're, you're sitting there going, wait a minute, you know. Um, you're stuck inside and you just you know play board games, find something for your kids to do. Um, but let me go back into here. Uh, California picket early as hell, but great show. Was checking to see what sold and caught you stuff to make my coffee. Get something done today. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, this is actually my third cup of coffee. And I'm a coffee fiend, man. I don't know. Um, uh, Northern Picker says, thanks for the show, Mike. Always learn something here. Yeah, thanks thanks so much. Hey, thanks, everybody, for watching me uh, today and uh, for watching me live during the show. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate all the subscribers, all the comments. You know, you, you guys are what makes the show exist. You guys are what makes me get up and do this on Mondays, Wednesdays. And Fridays and Thursdays, it's, it's sharing the knowledge out there. That, that's what I, you know, that's really what, you know, uh, I want to do here. And, um, you know, I all I could say is thanks to everybody that's watching, that's liking. You know, um, if you like, if you truly enjoy my videos, hit like. Show me. Show me you like these videos, guys. Leave a comment. Subscribe to me. Um, to all my loyal guys that are out there and girls, you know, thanks so much. It means a lot to me. You know, there's nothing like, you know, I, I get an email, I'll be sitting there and, you know, I'm busting my ass and yell at my customer or whatever and my phone goes beep. I look up and it's, you know, it, it's somebody like Highland Picker leaving a nice comment or, or, you know what I mean? It just, that stuff picks me up during the day and uh, hopefully it picks you guys up. But uh, I want to thank everybody for watching today. You guys have a great day. Go out and pick, you know, go out and buy, sell, flip, make that money and stay tuned. My next uh, episode will be Wednesday at uh, 9.30 Central Time in the morning a.m. Uh, morning Cup of Joe. So peace out to everybody. And uh, I'll catch everybody later. It's the morning cup of joy. It's the drink of joy, you know. That the cup of smoke is gathered on our folks. It's through the vintage and it's morning cup of joy. <laughs> Well, that was a little tool today, boys. A little tool. Peace, guys. See you Wednesday. Dumbfounded dipshits.
certainly hope we will. Vacation from this. These guys. We're in the